Hi, welcome to Take 5, where we daily consider devotional thoughts from Oswald Chambers' book, My Utmost for His Highest. Today is August 1st. The title of today's devotional is Learning About His Ways. When Jesus finished commanding his 12 disciples, he departed from there to teach and to preach in their cities, Matthew chapter 11 and verse 1. Dr. Chambers describes today's devotional as being some of the facets of God's ways that we rarely recognize. There are three mentioned, beginning with the poor idea of putting family before God. He starts with, if you stayed home when God told you to go because you were so concerned about your own people there, then you actually robbed them of the teaching of Jesus Christ himself. I've heard it expressed by some people, once I get older and have less responsibilities, I'll probably go to church. Or, when the kids are grown, delay tactics which put off service to God. Christ addressed similar ideas at the close of Luke chapter 9, where he spoke of wrong priorities held by some. Dr. C. interprets it, When you obeyed and left all the consequences to God, the Lord went into your city to teach. But as long as you were disobedient, you blocked his way. Watch where you begin to debate with him and put what you call your duty into competition with his commands. Recall that Chambers was speaking to individuals who were preparing to go into the missionary fields, some whom were possibly feeling a hesitation at leaving their families behind to pursue this call of God. Chambers was telling them, if you say, I know that he told me to go, but my duty is here, it simply means that you do not believe that Jesus means what he says. To not obey the calling of God whenever and in whatever way he says can actually be putting our family in jeopardy due to disobedience. We haven't any idea of what all that God wishes to accomplish with us and in fact with them in our going or the possible consequences in our not obeying. We must do what he says tells us to do. The second tells us about basically what many call playing God. Chambers uses a scripture from the time when Christ had taken Peter, James, and John with him up to a mountain for a time of prayer. And while there, the two Old Testament saints, Moses and Elijah, had come to speak to Christ. Peter suggests, Master, let us make three tabernacles, a type of setting where those three could be worshipped. Peter had failed to grasp the point of their appearance, being to encourage our Savior in the suffering he was about to face. O.C. asks, are we playing the part of an amateur providence, trying to play God's role in the lives of others? Are we so noisy in our instruction of other people that God cannot get near to them? You've likely encountered these types of individuals, those sages who can solve all your problems with the use of their own wisdom. Very little, if any, scripture is used. It's primarily directions from what they think the Bible instructs. Dr. Chambers wisely imparts that we must learn to keep our mouths shut and our spirits alert. God wants to instruct us regarding his son, and he wants to turn our times of prayer into mounts of transfiguration. The strongest way to help someone is to pray with them. One of Chambers' golden statements is made here that God is wanting to turn our prayer times into mounts of transfiguration. If you're not familiar with the account, at the close of it, God instructs the apostles to listen solely to his son, and afterwards the apostles find themselves standing alone in his midst. God wants us to listen a lot more than advising. Chambers says when we become certain that God is going to work in a particular way, he will never work in that way again. The point here is that God is not predictable by your own preconceived notions. The final consideration for today is regarding the attitude we are to have when waiting on God to act. Dr. Chambers encourages us to follow scripture, wait on the Lord and he will work. But don't wait sulking and spiritual, spiritually and feeling sorry for yourself just because you can't see one inch in front of you. I certainly relate to this, feeling myself waiting for a further movement of God in my life. Dr. C. asks, are we detached enough from our own spiritual fits of emotion to wait patiently for him? Waiting is not sitting with folded hands doing nothing, but it is learning to do what we are told. And so as I wait, I continue to work as God gives me direction, learning and sharing every day from these devotions. Waiting is not a holding, standing still pattern. We are to continually be growing spiritually. 
but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. Thanks for being here today. Uh, and now may God's grace and peace be ours as we seek to live our utmost for his highest. Have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.